So you want to start learning Japanese and you've already done a little bit of research to realize that you probably need to learn something called hiragana and katakana. I mean, that's that's why you clicked on this video, right? Okay, so for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with the Japanese writing system, I thought I would explain it a little bit first just in case before we dive into the contents of this video. So Japanese is made up of three separate writing systems that are kind of just mixed all together. So the first one is kanji. And kanji are more or less Chinese characters. A lot of the kanji were actually imported from China long ago into Japan and used because they didn't have a writing system previously. Fun fact, some of these kanji were actually invented in Japan. Just like Chinese, kanji are just pictographs that represent a word and it's not alphabetic in any sense. There's no way to look at a kanji and sound it out. So that is that is one challenge that we're not going to cover in this video. <laughs> and the second one is hiragana. Hiragana is primarily used for a lot of the grammatical parts of a sentence. It is the writing system that is used to teach you Japanese and to teach Japanese people Japanese. Because kids have to go to school to learn kanji. They don't just, you know, come out of the womb knowing all the kanji. And hiragana is more or less a syllabary system. Each character of hiragana represents a sound. So if you see them, you can read and sound them out like you would an alphabet. Okay, and the third writing system is katakana, which is primarily used for foreign words and also your name if you are not a Japanese person. Also, you might be wondering which one should I learn first, hiragana or katakana? When you start learning Japanese, you're going to primarily be learning in hiragana. Is for this reason that obviously you're going to want to learn hiragana first. You can then learn katakana after that and then start your learning. Okay, so the first step is you're going to want to get some sort of source to learn hiragana and katakana. It's going to be pretty much universal regardless of what resource you have. But I will say what's really important is that whatever resource you choose, you have access to pronunciation, whether that's like the form of an audio recording or a CD, as well as some sort of instruction about the brush strokes so that you know how to correctly write the characters in the correct order as well. So what I would do first is I would go through line by line and just practice learning how to write the characters. And each time you write the character, say what that sound is, what the associated sound is. So in step one, in this stage of the process, your goal is just to get familiar with what they look like because it is a lot to take in. So as long as you get the brush strokes down that someone could show you what one of the katakana looks like, you should be able to be like, oh, okay, I know this. I don't really remember what sound it makes, but I remember how to write it. That's more or less like what you should expect from yourself in the beginning. Also, if you would like, I have some links to some free worksheets down below that you can print out or you could use on an iPad and print as many as you need and just practice as much as you can. The next step is to focus more on pronunciation and get more familiar with the Japanese pronunciation of these sounds. So what I recommend is just going through the hiragana chart and listen to the audio and then try your best to say the sound out loud and you know try to mimic as closely to that audio as you can. And then I'd also go through the katakana chart. So in this step it's really crucial not to focus on just one of them because you will kind of be neglecting the other. So don't do that. Don't, don't neglect your katakana friend. <laughs> There's actually a really good resource that I can recommend to you guys that goes along with the Genki book series. Now you don't actually have to have a Genki book to use this program, which is great. Now you can see these two Genki books I already have. Then you're gonna wanna click and open the book and where it says Japanese writing system, you can click on that and it'll take you to a list of different audios. So you don't need to be perfect. This is just another opportunity for you to learn for your brain to get familiar with the sounds. If you're not listening to native pronunciation and practicing that as much as you can, you're never really going to like learn what it should sound like. Also, that's going to help you be able to distinguish sounds because sounds that you would think if you look at the romaji, the English lettering, you're gonna think are very different sounds. But when you hear how Japanese pronounce these sounds, you're gonna think, wow, these sounds that I thought would be very different actually sound very similar and it could be hard to distinguish them. This gives you an opportunity to like really test your ears and get more familiar with how the language sounds. And now step three is when I would focus on a lot, a lot, a lot 
gift of repetition. I would highly recommend using something like Memrise or Duolingo. So I found this Memrise course that's based off of the Genki textbook series and I love it because all of the words in this free course, they all include audio recording. Every time a new word comes up, you can also hear how the words sound. So you might not have the Genki textbook, you might not be into like planning to use the Genki textbook, but the first couple chapters of this course are the hiragana and the katakana. So I actually didn't use Memrise to learn hiragana and katakana. I actually just came across this because I'm using the Genki textbooks now, but I do think that this could be a really good option. If you like flashcards, if you like Memrise and that suits you, then go ahead and use it. It's great because it has the audio there and Memrise is a good way to learn vocab. But what I actually did and what I honestly highly, highly recommend is just download and use Duolingo. The Duolingo app obviously like it gamifies language learning. There's the main language courses that you get in Duolingo, but then there will be a, an additional tab just for learning hiragana and katakana. It's a lot of different ways to learn. It tests your listening ability, it tests your reading ability, it shows you the kana used in context a lot. It's just very dynamic in how it teaches you and it's extremely repetitive. I mean, Duolingo does a great job of making it feel like you're playing a game, so that kind of makes up for the repetitiveness. But to be honest, it's so repetitive that by the time you have mastered all of the hiragana and katakana levels in Duolingo, you should probably feel pretty sick of studying them. Now I say that and it sounds like a bad thing, but it just goes to show like how much repetition is one of the best ways that we learn. But to go into more detail about what you can expect in the Duolingo app, it's going to teach you a little bit of the writing. It's gonna have you draw the characters on your phone. Also, it's going to give you a lot of opportunities to read in context. It's going to introduce little words. It's introducing it more with context rather than just straight flashcards, straight memorization. I think it's gonna stick in your brain better because you're doing a bunch of different things with it on repeat. And then this is why I said in the beginning, I think you should focus on writing first because I think by the time you get into these apps, you're going to be really like drilling these home into your head. And even though Duolingo will teach you like a little bit of the writing, I don't really think that it's adequate to like truly teach you writing from scratch. It's not a whole lot of writing practice and writing on an app with your finger, very different from writing on paper. I wouldn't rely on it. Just by the time you get into Duolingo, if you have a familiarity with the writing system, finger writing, it's just gonna be review for you. Now, the final step is active recall. So what I mean by active recall versus this passive learning is more or less when you're learning through Memrise or Duolingo, the content is provided for you. You're just matching them. It's just not totally something you have to produce off the top of your head. Now, the true test to know whether you actually like know this well or not is to see how much you can produce off the top of your head. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna quiz ourselves on a piece of paper. On one side, write the vowels across the top and write the consonants going down. And you're gonna do this on both sides. And then what you're gonna do is without looking at anything, give yourself as much time as you need, go through this chart and start writing out all the characters. And then when you're done, flip it over and do the same thing on the katakana side. And if you don't know some or you forget some, it's fine, just leave it blank, do your best, guess. The idea is just to kind of see how much you can actually recall off the top of your head. Once you're done, look and see, were there any that you missed? Were there some that you got wrong? Correct them and go back and fill in those blanks you missed while looking at an actual chart. Maybe do the quiz one more time in the same setting and try again after checking the answers and see if you can get them the second time. And then maybe come back to it tomorrow or another day and just do it again. Then I have a bonus step for you if you really want to go the extra mile or you feel like you need it. You can actually print out the hiragana and katakana charts and then cut them out. And then on the back side, write the sound that they make and then just use them as flashcards. You could turn it into a game, mix up the hiragana and the katakana, and you could play a game where you have to match the hiragana with the katakana, like the same sound. Or you can just kind of shuffle them up and then try to arrange them in like sound order. It doesn't have to be just like the original chart, but you can essentially like kind of make it into a puzzle. I think that if you go through all of these four steps successfully and really like, you know, take your time with them, you should be able to confidently read and listen and speak 
and write in hiragana and katakana. But for those of you who might be like, hmm, so what's next? My biggest tip for you now is to just start studying Japanese right away. Do not hesitate. If you hesitate and take time between learning the kana and actually like trying to learn the language, you're going to forget the kana very 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 quickly and some textbooks like genki which is what i'm using they will also use romaji for the first couple chapters because they know that you're not perfect at reading hiragana and katakana and this leads me to my next tip which is don't be afraid to go back and review them if you need to if you find yourself studying japanese and you're like man i really kind of forget the hiragana or i feel rusty go back to duolingo go back to memorize or just pull out a piece of paper and quiz yourself a little bit and my last tip which is i don't know if it's really a tip it's just more of like a little fact that i wanted to point out to you guys if you've ever looked at japanese writing like specifically text like a, t a book TV show on the internet, you might notice that some of the characters looks really different than what you learned. And you will see that some of the characters, for example, the character for Sa in Hiragana, you're going to see something like this, where it's all connected. After asking around, people don't write that way. It's just a text font. So just something to keep in mind. All right, guys. So I feel like that's everything that I really wanted to go over as far as learning hiragana and katakana. My hope for you guys is that with these steps, you're going to be able to not only learn them quickly, but be able to like really retain them. 